I'm going to show how to install how to install your Linux operating system onto a VPS, a virtual private server, and it's very easy to do. And I'm going to show you how to install a web hosting panel. Very easy to do. Only takes a few command lines. I'm not going to do the server hardening thing because I'm doing this obviously for a repository. And if this is for personal use, it's not really need needed to do all that. And if you do need to do server hardening, you know, make it more secure. There's plenty of videos and plenty of uh, tuitions online that show you how to do that. All right. So yeah, I guess I should go ahead and just get started. So let me go through the motions here. The place where I got the VPS, a virtual private server, is by VM. And this is a very good company. All right. If you read that form, I gave you guys lowintalk.com. Uh, low, uh, low end talk. This server company is spoke of very highly, and the server space that I bought is the VM. It's one, it's one gig of space. It's this one right here. You get 20 gigabytes of SD. That stands for solid state drive, solid state hard drive. You get one gig of memory and 350 a month. And if that's not enough space for you, you can add one terabyte for five dollars per month. I think the smallest amount of extra space you can add is about 256 gigabytes, and that'll cost you that'll cost you 125 per month extra. All right, if you want that space. So when you sign up for the server here, let me go through the motions of how that works. So, so let's say you want this plan. Let's say you want a plan, and the plan I selected was a slice 1024. I selected that one. All right. So you you select order this order this panel. You can select any any place you want. But yes, they are very good prices, and they are a very good company. Okay, this one here is in stock. Like I said, just check back every day. If you don't see the one you want available, just check it several times a day. There is plugins you can add to your to your Chrome browser that will tell you when a web page changes. So that way, when something changes, you will get you will get an, an alert on, on your smart smart device. There's plugins for that. Okay, so you order you order the server you want. Let's say you want month to month service. That's already checked. All right, and you don't want additional IPs unless you want one. So you don't do anything right there. DDS DDoS filtering. If you want that, it's three dollars per IP. If you want to add that, you think you need it, but if you're just doing this for friends and family, you don't really need it. Now here where it says configure, uh, configure server, where it's asking for a host name, you can put anything there. It doesn't make any difference. You can even put my server. It makes no difference. Or you can put your actual domain name if you have one. It doesn't make any difference what you put there because you can change it later. All right. Your root password. For your password, because we're not going to do server hardening, I want you to get a good password. And you can go... You find that site I use for passwords. You can go to you can go to this site right here. It's rumkin.com, tools password, and what I suggest you do is click on 20, 26, click on alpha, and click on numeric uh, numbers, and generate yourself a sixteen a sixteen digit passcode. All right, you might even want to put spec. You might even want to put well, you can't put special characters, but believe me. No one's going to break that password. You can go longer if you want. You can go 29, 58. It's up to you. I always guess you 26. All right. Make sure you move your mouse back and forth so that green bar on top goes all the way across. Then just generate yourself a password and get save that. Make sure you save that somewhere safe. That's going to be, use that as your, as your password for your server for when you log in using your, um, using your, your putty client. All right, so get save that somewhere. I'm not going to use it. I already have a password I'm going to use, but this is a site I suggest you go to. You go to, to go to to do that. So let's go back to to uh, buy VPM. Okay, buy buy VM. Okay, so this is the page where you actually purchase you actually purchase your server. So like I said, it gets put in gets put in a good a good password. All right, so let me put one in. All right. And in here, when you when you click when you click continue, you're gonna buy the server. 
and you can you can actually pay for your server you can actually oh the host name host name host name internet is already in use all right so you can't use that so i'm just going to type in just a bunch of stupid words doesn't make any difference what you what you use you can actually you can actually use a, a actually your domain name if you have one is fine now when you check out you have choices of payments you have a promo code enter it enter it there you got to you've got to put in your information here your name I don't think it even has to be your real name but just make sure you give them a real phone number because they may want to call you all right so put in so put in your your information because you have to sign up to to their obviously to their company because they're going to send you server panel inf information all right now when you check out you're going to have several ways to pay e even in including big bitcoins paypal credit card uh cyber currency yes they accept cyber currency so yes you can try to make yourself anonymous at buy vm if you wish to so i've already gone for that they have they have delivered my server it took about a day and a half and they will send you an email they will tell you will get an email real quick telling you that they are setting up your server then hours or a day later they will send you another email giving you the login to your server control panel all right and you will log into it they will give you your username and your login to log in and you will see something looks like this i'm not going to worry about the fact that you guys can see the ip because i can change the ip anytime and it just cost me a couple of bucks so i'm not worried about that all right so this is this, this this is your server control panel that you will get the information for all right so the first first thing you want to do is install your operating system all right so it gets click on your your host name i chose the host name i chose was default ip address like i said it makes no difference what what you use so click on that and this will take you to this screen here where you see your server information all right that's your nub and what that is that's the actual that's the actual physical server that your vps is on the server that all of you are sharing because there's more than one vps that's why i call virtual private server it's not a dedicated box you're sharing space all right this is your this is the ip address obviously right there all right so now to install your operating system go over here to where it says uh reinstall all right this is a kvm control control panel and there's a lot of stuff you can do, including mount your own CD images if you want to. They also have CD images. I won't get into all of that right now. So if you want to install, and the the my my operating system of choice is is Debian. That's how most people pronounce it. D E B I A N. All right. Not not Ubuntu. That's Ubuntu is probably the most popular. Then like CentOS is probably very popular. But I use I use Debian. I'm going to use Debian 64-bit, 9.0. So just click install. So click reinstall, right there. I'm going to click reinstall, and give you uh, put in your root password. Remember I told you to generate generate a root password. I gave you the URL for that. That's going to be in the server server description. I use a 26 uh, uh, digit one. I'm not doing that here because this is just for demonstration. So I'm just going to enter a password that I know. All right. Check this box right here that says it's okay to wipe all your data because you may be overriding a server that you already created. So they just warning you. All right. So click, click reinstall. So this is going to take a few minutes because most of their stuff is, um, is SSD solid state drive. So it only, it only takes a few minutes. Now that the, the these <clears throat> software I'm going to use to communicate with the server job done says it right there it's already done it installed that quick all right the Debian server is installed the serp the software I use to communicate with the server is called putty I've already downloaded it so let me open it you're going to extract it it comes with a zip file you just unzip it and then you just launch it all right putty exe I'm going to open it all right and putty you can set some people don't know because i'm getting ready to open a console i know some of you have probably seen people use the use the uh console and the text is real small if you go to where it says windows you can configure that personally you can set your text size all right and how your console behaves so i've already done that i've already preset that up you want to be on port 22 
all right you want to be on ssh like it says right there and you want to go ahead and where it says host name you want to enter the ip address all right now you can save this information so you don't have to keep reentering it i guess go ahead and click and click open all right i guess it's not quite ready yet so let's wait a few more seconds and see if they're going to become ready let's open putty again There we go. Success. All right. All right. We're in. It's, it's, you can read this if you want to. All right. So I guess click yes. You're going to log in as root. The root, the name to log in is root. All right. Let me go ahead and make this bigger so you all can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Your login is root. Press enter. All right. Put in your password. You won't see it on the screen, but it is going in. Press enter. All right, we are now communicating with our server. All right. And believe me, this is not painful. It's gonna be a few very simple commands I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put in. The first thing we're gonna do is update the server. All right. And this is, this, is, this is what you're gonna put in right there. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. You can put that right there, amp git update. Put the two and signs right there, amp git upgrade. All right, you can put that in. You can actually put amp git by itself and then wait for it to update and then and then do the upgrade. All right, but you can you can put both of these command lines in together. I will have that in the description. All right, let me copy it. All right, let me go back to putty. There we go, it's in. So let's click enter. And it's going to update and upgrade all at the same time. Now I'm not upgrading the di distribution. Sometimes you may get something telling you to upgrade the uh, the, the whole operating system itself. To up to upgrade it, don't I mean to yeah to upgrade it, don't do that. Not upgrade it. Like if for instance it's on version nine, there might be a version ten. You might get information to do that. Don't do that. Don't don't change the version number. All right. Don't update the distribution. All right. So let's click yes, let's click Y for yes, that you accept the fact that it's going to install this, it says right there, 43.4 megabytes, all right? So let's click yes. Now the server's gonna update. This is the same thing as when you open up your, your this is almost the same thing as when you open up your notepad, you open up your, um, you open up your new laptop, you first load it up, everything's gotta update, same thing, you gotta update the operating system. Your phone, you turn it on, you, you got to update your phone, same thing. All right. All right, so the server has now updated, all right? Let me go ahead and clear the screen. You can clear all this stuff off the screen by typing C-L-E-A-R, all right? Click enter. So now you have a nice fresh screen to look at with all that, with all that junk all over it. Now, the server is up and running. Like I said, we can do server hardening but we don't really need to do that, all right? So I'm gonna make this as painful as possible. Now we're going to install the web control panel, your web hosting panel, which will let you install domains, FTP, do whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna do that. And what you, where you're gonna to go to is a place, I've been using this server panel for several years now, it's called Vista CP. Some people will tell you not to use it. They've had, had a few security issues, I'm not gonna to lie to you, they have. But so have a lot of server panels, all right? Hardcore Linux users will tell you to do everything by command line. Do I know how to do, um, do I know how to do it by command line? Yes, I am. Do I wanna to try to sit here and teach you how to put up a server, put in the domain uh, directories by command line? No, I don't. <laughs> not, not doing that. I gotta happen. Just use, just use the Vista CP a hosting panel. I use it. I use it. I love it. It works great. All right. And that's why I installed Debian 9. As you see right here, the accept sent OS, Debian 9, and Ubuntu. What you want to do is click on here where it says install. I already am. That's your information. It's going to bring up and scroll down here. Now here, we're not installing a mail server. See right here, all these different options. All right. We're not installing a mail server. So click no to that. 
all right I've never put a mail server on any server for mail I always use a company called MX root for my mail uh, softlicious will let you install different different types of services onto your server we don't need that I mean for example if you wanted to install um, like on cloud all right you could do that with with this software right here you don't need it just say no okay this is your database I would suggest you go ahead and keep that. You might find you have a need for that if you want to do something later. So keep that check off to my SQ, to my, to my SQL, my quill. Keep that, keep that, keep that checked off. All right. File system quota. You don't want to file system quota. All right. Now you can install here this this firewall here. I, if you need it, this is IP tables and this is uh, fail to, uh, fail to ban. Fail to ban, what fail to ban does, if people keep trying to hack your, keep trying to get into your server via port 22, this will stop them after a few attempts and they can't try again for like another half hour or something, depending on how, how it's configured. And here it's IP tables. Now, if you want to learn how to use these two, keep that, keep that checked off. Fail to ban is pretty easy. IP tables, you are going to have to do some command lines. But like I say, if you're just using this for your own server repo, you don't for your own personal use, you don't need this. For me, for for my wizard, for my for my uh, diamond wizard, I do have these installed. I have other stuff installed too. But if you do, but if you want to do this the easy way and you want to keep this simple, don't check that. Keep that no. Now FTP. If you're going to be the only one using the server, you don't need FTP. I, you guys use the win s the win scp which i will show you in a few minutes but if you're gonna but if you're gonna, but if you're gonna give others directory space on your server then you need ftp all right i'm not going to install ftp because i was asked to do this by somebody who wants to do this for personal use so you don't need ftp all right you're not going to give logins to other users all right this is going to be your server for your for for your repo use all right we don't need the additional repository say no we don't need the dns 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 i don't i don't install dns software on my server i handle dns from an outside source all right so say no and we're going to install impact i guess apache by itself that's your web that's your that's the web server so that right there is pretty much done the host name as i said it makes no difference you can call you can call it whatever you want you can call it my server it makes no difference all right and your email, let me put my email in. You don't have to use a real email here, all right? You don't have to. All right, and the password, I'm gonna leave blank. You can put it in there, but it will generate you a password when it's done installing, all right? Now, we're gonna, gener we're gonna press the generate button here. This is gonna, this is gonna generate your server strip. All right, so click, so click that. Let me just go through it, make sure I have everything checked off. Once again, the web server is Apache, FTP, no. Mail server, no. Softlicious, no. Firewall, no. DNS, no. Additional repository, no. File system quota, no. Um, host name, makes no difference. If you got a domain, you can put that there if you want to. Um, your email, password, it will generate a password at the end, so you don't need to put that in unless you want to. So let's press generate. The password is so you can log into your web hosting panel. All right, click generate. All right, so here we go down below. This first line here, actually the second line here, the first line here is telling you how to get into your server. You don't need how to use the putty client to get to your server. We've already connected to the server, so we don't need this here. All right, this first, the second one here is going to install the strip that's going to install the web panel. All right, so let's click that, copy it. Copy that whole second line there where it says download install strip. Copy that whole thing. Go back to putty. Right click, paste it in, click enter. All right, the curl program is not installed. That's the program that installs the, the strip, the file. So it doesn't have that. So we're going to have to manually install it. So here we go with the command line. App, get, put a sp space right there. Put install. And then put the software it says that's missing curl c u r l all right press enter that will install that missing software that needs to install the strip click 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 enter mm -hmm. 
Once again, it's asking you like it did the last time, do you want to install the software? Click yes. Why? Just press Y, click enter. All right, curl is now installed. All right, let's clear the screen again. C L E A R. All right, now let's install the command. Let's, let's uh, paste in the command again to install the, the file that will install the strip, that will install the web, the web server panel. All right, click enter. All right, the file is installed. That was very quick. All it's doing is installing that file to your server. So let's go back to Vista CP and the third line here where it says run it, copy that whole thing. That was generated from what you put up here. All right, so copy that. Go back to Putty and just right click it in and just click enter. All right, it's showing you just going to install the Apache web server with the database. All right, would you like to continue? Press Y, click enter. Says it may take about 15 minutes, but it will be faster than that. It'll probably be about maybe eight minutes, 10 minutes at the most. Because this is an SSD drive, solid state drive. So it's gonna go pretty, pretty quickly. So basically you can just go make yourself a sandwich. All right, sit back and watch this install. All right, now you see it puts up here this information. All this is information that you need for your database. So where it says right here, please start to start uh, the MySQLD, that's your, that's your database. Copy, uh, I, want you to, I want you to left click right there. And I want you to go all the way down and drag that down, go all the way down. And basically you're gonna right click and, you're gonna, and that's gonna let you copy it. You're gonna copy it. And what you're gonna do is open up, what I just do is open up Notepad and save that. Click paste, you're gonna save that information, all right? This is your login information for your web panel. There it is right there. You go there through your IP address, all right? And it's giving me your, it's giving me the password right there. There it is, the login is admin. So all you gotta do is click this. You can double click it right here inside inside of uh, Notepad++. So they can double click the address. Server panel will open. You get this information about your connection is not private. That's because we are going through HTTPS, HTTPS secured, all right? But we don't have a SSL certificate, all right? You get this, all servers give this to you when you don't have an actual SSL certificate. But it's my server, I know it's safe. It's your server, you will know it's safe. So you just click advance. Go on the bottom here, it says proceed to the address. Click that, all right? It's right there, click it. Right here, you put in admin. And then you put in the password, all right? Click login. First thing I'm gonna do is go over here and change the password. So you guys don't go in here and log me out. <laughs> all right, I guess change the password. When I click save. All right. And this is your server control panel, your web hosting panel. And if you had to did all those options that I didn't check off, you could even run your own DNS. If you wanna get a couple of other small cheap servers and put uh, Vista CP on there, you can run your own DNS. You can run your own DNS server. All right, Here's your, if, you want to, if you want to actually do your own mail, your, your database, all right, bag up, you can make bag ups of your, of your, um, of your hosting, okay, whatever your, whatever you got inside your, um, whatever you're putting online, you, you, you can back, you can make bag ups. Now, if you want to make, I'm not going to go too much here because I'm going to do another. It's, it, we're live. It's online. It's online. In fact, let me go to the IP address. Let me actually just copy the IP address. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another. All right. And I'm going to go to that IP address. We're online. There it is, myserver.example.com. It is live. It's online. All right. All right. And the... Let me see, what should I do now? So I'm actually going to do the creation of the repo in the second video. All right, I think I'm just going to uh, leave it here. I guess I'll just go through the server control panel right, right quick and show you, for example, if you click on web, 
it will show you this, this 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 is your default domain this is not a real domain in other words when you go when you go to this IP address you're going to that let me open up let me open up um, let me see let me go back to my desktop and let me open up when s when s i forgot what it's called i'm sorry when s scp this is this is what i use instead of instead of uh, ftp so let me open it so i show you how you would transfer files to your server all right and let's put in the ip address all right Put in the IP address, same thing, port 22. Put in the username, which is root. All right, put in the password. The password to the server, not the password to the hosting panel. All right, hit enter. The same same message like we, we got before about the, the, the keys. So just click, just, just click update. And this is this is what we use for our FTP. We're on the server. We're in the root directory. The actual the actual uh, web hosting where you put your domains at is going to be in home. So you click home. Go to admin. Go to web right there. Go to web. I'm going to cover this in, in video two. So I'm going too fast. Sorry about that. There's your actual. There's the actual default domain. That's what you go to when you put in the IP address because we don't have an actual domain name yet. So click that, go into public HTML. And there and there you are. There is the index uh, the index dot XTML, and that's what you're seeing. And that's what you're seeing right here. All right. In fact, let me just change it to something. Let me change the name. I'll put welcome. I'm gonna like edit it. You can edit it right here. I'm gonna put um I'm going to put welcome. Welcome to. Click save. Just show you guys that it is live. Go back here. Refresh it. And there you go. Welcome to. Okay. <laughs> All right. I did misspell welcome. I'm not going to leave that like that. Let me go back and change it. I'm an idiot. Let me go back and change it. All right, click save, click refresh, and there we go. Welcome to myserver.example.com. All right, so you can actually, right here, if you wanted to put up, if you wanted to put up a web server under your, it's under your IP address without an actual domain, all right, you can do it right here. You can put everything right here in this folder, transfer it right there, all right? In the next video, I will show you how you make, how you actually put up the repository, how you make this di directory indexable, because right now this directory is not indexable. If I remove the actual, me actual, then I get, then I'll be done here. So if I go here and I disable the index.xml file, just gonna put some junk at the end of it right there so it doesn't work. And we actually go back. The directory is not directory is not indexable. So the next video, I'll show you how to make that directory indexable. Then I'll actually install a I'll actually install the repository. And you can do that under the IP address if you want to. You actually don't need a domain if you just want to use this for personal use. You don't even need it. You don't really even need a domain. You can just use the IP address if you want to. Because if it gets you and some friends and you want to share a repo. For your friends and family and you're not going to put the address on twitter you're not going to put the address on telegram you're going to keep it personal you can just use the ip address if you want to but you can get a xyz or even a dot uh, com address for like a dollar 99 i'll show you where you can get that that'll be in the third video all right it's like a dollar 99 and the domain privacy is like another five or six bucks so it's seven dollars altogether. about seven dollars altogether. So if you want to actually make an actual domain, you got to go to obviously a registry bio domain. All right. Set up the DNS. So it points to your IP address. You would make it. So let's say if I wanted to make, let's say I wanted to put Ruby Jew wizard right here. You go in here where it says you click right there. Let me go back. 
See right there, it's that little button right there. It says add web of domain. You just click click right there. Assuming you've already went to a registry, bought bought a, bought, bought, bought a domain. I just put my, my domain, for example. Okay. My domain, I'll put .com, for example. All right. Your, 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 it's obviously not my domain, your, your domain name, whatever you have. You put it right there, all right? Turn off the DNS, unclick that, unclick the mail, because we don't, you're not using those. Click Add. So that's done. Click Web right there, and you will see now that you've added a domain. So whatever domain name that's available, you go buy it, you put it in here, your registry, you set up your DNS, you point it to your server, and it will, it will work, all right? So I'm done. I thank you guys for watching. All right. And I will be back in a day or two with video number two showing how to actually set up the repo. And I'm going to get pretty extensive because as I said, no one actually shows how the repository works. All right. So I'm done. I thank you guys for watching. All right.